ready to begin? Spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. With this, we welcome you to historic Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church, 540 West Maxwell Street, Lexington, Kentucky, where on this very day, August the 7th, 2022, in our church history, we are celebrating 200 years of continuous worship at this same location. Let us stand and give the Lord, let us stand and give the Lord a hand. Let us stand and give him a hand. be seated for sustaining a continuous congregation that worship him in spirit and in truth for 232 years you don't want to ever forget that God is history and that history began Incarnate Jesus breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Just want to just want to share that with you. Just want to share that, and we want to share what the Lord blessed us as a history committee to put together. That in 1822, unfortunately, and we un understandably, a former slave, Denmark Vesey, tried to lead a number of other slaves in rebellion against the horrible, peculiar institution of slavery in 1822. The same year that Brother Captain and his congregation secured this property. We have reason to celebrate. It's in our book, Essence of a Saga. We are yet still living that saga. As long as we keep our hands in his unchanging hands, we shall get home someday. Now, y'all didn't mind that little brief interlude. The Lord was on me all month. Last month, I knew it was coming. Slaves, where a penny was a whole lot of money, and they didn't even have that. 200 years, black folks own a whole city block in downtown Lexington. We don't have reason to shout and celebrate. I believe we do. We're not worshiping no history. We're worshiping the God of history that made it all possible. Sister Taylor, our church clerk, will come at this time and give us our announcements. We will. Let me, let me, let me, let me go with the scripture. I'm sorry. Thank you, Freddie. Thinking about how God's blessed me. I, 
Our morning scripture lesson uh, comes from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse, verses 5 and 6. Verse 2, chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God and thought it not a robbery to be equal with God. God bless the reading of your holy word. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for being better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. We thank you for all that you have done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do on behalf of those that have accepted you in the pardon of our sins. We know that your grace, your mercy, your truth cascades down on the just as well as the unjust. But most especially are those that have accepted you, Lord, we come this day to worship you in spirit and in truth. And we would ask, Lord, that you stop by here for a little while. Let us feel your spirit. Let us do that which we're doing in that spirit and truth that you require of us. We ask you to bless the sick and afflicted, the shut-in, the lonely, the despondent, those that feel like there is no hope. Give them hope, Lord, so that they too can enter into this fellowship. Lord, we ask you to bless our country. We took pride, Lord, in trying to be a country that would help other countries. Now, Lord, we need the prayers of other countries for ourselves. Let us return to those basic tenets where we were at least striving to make sure that our democracy would be strong. We ask, God, that thy will be done, not ours. Bless the entire world, Lord. Bless everyone that's in need this day. Lord, we ask that you would bless our worship service. Might we be about your business in this, thy house of worship. We ask you, God, for all of these things. As always, Lord, we ask you to forgive us of our many sins and our many shortcomings. It is in Jesus' blessed name we do pray and ask it all this day. Amen. Now, Sister Taylor will come forward to deliver our announcements. Church clerk of the Historic Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church. I would like to welcome the Nellie Jeanette Women's Retreat from Florida and Georgia. Psalms 111, stanza one reads, praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. How blessed we are that you have chosen to praise the Lord with us today. And remember, you are always welcome at Historic Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church. Our announcements are as follows. Prayer and teachers meeting is held on Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. and our Bible school is held on Saturday at 10 o'clock a.m. Zoom, inf Zoom information for these weekly activities can be found in the weekly church email. The Young Adults Bible Class Zoom meeting will be Wednesday, August the 10th at 7 o'clock p.m. Zoom information for this meeting can also be found in the weekly church email. We are collecting a special love offering today and next Sunday for our Eastern Kentucky brothers and sisters who were affected by the destructive floodwaters that ravaged their communities, leaving many homeless and in great need. Anyone who wishes to donate to this offering, 
please designate the amount and write the word flood in the bottom portion of your offering envelope and include it with your tithes and offering. Please give generously. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Sunday, August the 21st, we will be celebrating homecoming and rally day. Please encourage as many Pleasant Green Church family members as possible to join us. The suggested donation for the day is $60, but any amount would be appreciated. The second pastoral candidate, the Reverend Dr. Dorothy Edwards, will be with us on the weekend of August the 26th and will deliver the morning message on Sunday, August the 28th. Saturday, August the 27th, Reverend Edwards will lead our Bible study and meet with church auxiliaries and groups. Details for the Saturday meetings will be announced later. Please be in prayer that God will guide and direct all our efforts in these pastoral consideration activities. Congratulations to the Pleasant Green Church family members of the Out on the Limb Book Club who were recognized with the Essay Award for a compelling story of Stand Together during the COVID-19 pandemic at the annual National Book Club Conference in Atlanta, Georgia on Saturday, August the 6th. Our prayers are for their safe return home. Please remember our pulpit committee, sick, shut-in, and bereaved members and friends and our government officials in your prayers. Sister Marquita Rollins' homecoming, homegoing service will be Friday, August the 12th at Unity Worship Center. Visitation is from 11 to 1, and the service is at 1 o'clock p.m. Brother Leroy Miller, Jr., great nephew of Sister Cleo Washington, the memorial will be held at care, cremation, and funeral service at 1304 Bryan Avenue on Tuesday, August the 9th at 12 o'clock p.m. The visitation will begin at 10 a.m. God bless their memory. The Fayette County COVID-19 community level remains high, which necessitates continued vigilance and monitoring and following the CDC and local governmental guidelines to reduce the spread of the COVID-19 virus variants and to minimize your risk of being affected. God bless you and have a safe week. I would be remiss uh, if I didn't follow through with a tradition at Pleasant Green. Brother Hugh Thompson, would you and your wife stand and let the congregation greet you as husband and wife. Brother Hugh Thompson, let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Affectionately known to many of us as Pete. Congratulations, Pete. And at the same time, I wasn't expecting it, but James Atkins raised up in this church. James, you and your wife stand up. They celebrated this week on yesterday their 50th wedding anniversary. Let's give them a round of applause. Always glad to see you all. It would be remiss if we didn't do that here at this time. As always, we have been blessed by rich, beautiful music tradition here at Pleasant Green, and Brother Marion Shockley just slid his way right in there. And we're so glad he did. He stopped by here just a little while for, with us to share the gifts that God has given him in music. We have two selections from him at this time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, can we rest on our feet? We're not going to tarry long, but when you get up to your feet, go ahead and tell God thank you. Come on, for brand new mercies. Go ahead and tell the Lord thank you. Come on, for life. Come on, tell the Lord thank you. Come on, tell the Lord thank you. We're going to get right to the word. The rhema word is coming. 
but we come to lift God's name up in this place. A great God deserves a great praise. I don't come to hold back today. I don't come to hold back. And yes, I get it. Everybody may not feel like, everybody may not feel like or have the energy to worship and praise God. But I want to admonish you, God, God honors that sacrifice of praise. He honors that sacrifice of praise. When you don't feel like it, when you don't feel like it, and you, you, you lift your hands and you open up your mouth and you tell God, thank you. He can open up the windows of heaven and he can pour you out a blessing. He honors that sacrifice of praise. Come on, even if you don't feel like it, open up your mouth, people of God. Come on, come on, come on. You don't need anybody to push you, but God has done some great things for you. And if he hasn't done, if he hasn't done anything that you can remember right now, just, just remember that he woke you up this morning. Just remember that he regulated your mind this morning. And with that in mind, go ahead, go ahead and, and open up your mouth and give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is so good. He is so good. We're not going to tarry long. Look at somebody and say, we serve a great God. We serve a great God. Come on. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We magnify him today for being great. Jesus. Listen, the splendor of a king clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. Yeah. And darkness tries to hide, but trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. One loud voice. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. All will see how great, how great is our God. Whoa, whoa. How great, come on, lift it up, is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, all will see how great, how great is our God, is our God. Here's the next part, it says age to age he stands, and time is in. His hands, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The Godhead, three and one. Father, Spirit, Son, the Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb. Come on, how great, how great, yeah, is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God? Oh, we'll see how great, how great, come on, is our God. Oh, oh Lord, how great, come on, lift it up, is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God? Oh, we'll see how great, how great. Is our God. I got another part for you. Whoa, you're the name above all names. Yeah. And you are worthy of all praise. And our hearts will sing how great is our God. Oh, oh Lord. Say you're the name. praise and our hearts will sing how great is our 
our God. Now come on, right there, lift your hands up. Oh, come on, and worship the Father. Come on, right there. Come on, worship the Father. He's so worthy to be praised. Come on, come on. Lift up your praise in this place. Come on, if he's been good. Lift up your praise in this place. Oh, Lord, you're worthy, you're worthy. Oh, great come on lift it up it's our God sing with me how great is our God all will see how great come on I hear you how great yeah is our God come on one loud voice how great how great come on sing with me how great All will see how great, great is our God. One more time, how great, how great. Come on, it's our God. Lift it up. Sing with me, how great. Come on, it's our God. All will see how great, how great is our God. It's our God. Come on, one loud voice, how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, all oh, will see how great, how great is our God. Come on, come on, let your praise go up for a great God. Come on, let your praise go up for a great God. You're so worthy, Lord. You're so worthy, Lord. God, you're so great. And we magnify you. We magnify you. We magnify you for being great. Lord, you're great, great and mighty, great and mighty is he, great and mighty is he. Come on in this atmosphere, can you lift your hands real high, come on real high. And right there, come on, open up your mouth and let your worship go forth. God, you're great, God, you're great, God, you're great. Hallelujah, Lord, we worship you. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same sun. God, you're worthy. Come on, can we pull on the Lord in this place? Come on, pull on the Lord in this place. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. God, we find rest. We find rest in your presence. We find rest in your presence. We find rest in your presence. God, we bless you. Mm. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree and my answer will be yes Lord yes 
It's a real simple song. It's a really old song. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. <laughs> One more time. I'll say yes, Lord. Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, And my answer will be yes. And my answer will be yes. Come on. Do I have any people in here that will say, And my answer will be yes. To your will and your way, my answer will be yes. And will be yes I'm ready Rev Lord yes come on magnify him in this place come on come on come on magnify him in this place come on come on make a great sound in this place hallelujah Jesus Thank you, Brother Shockley. There. Hey! There is a word. There is a word from the Lord. The Bible is God's voice in print. His love letter to his children. For therefore there is a word uh, from the Lord. And it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to bring that word. This morning, for several months, I've tarried with the, the Lord, with his Holy Spirit, preach to you, and I'm going to read the main text first, and then I'm going to go back to my morning scripture. I had that in, and I don't have the other glasses I got. I got the thick lens glasses at home. You can sometimes can't even read your own right typing here. I meant to read it for the morning scripture along with that, so I thank God for whatever age I am. <laughs> Y'all didn't catch that one. <laughs> it's a good day today. I'm going to read. Uh, how many of you know Paul was so heavy? The Lord bless that man for so much. I'm going to read to you from 2 Corinthians. Uh, chapter 2. Verses 10 
through 12. Verse 10. And herein I give my advice. For this is expedient for you who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Now, therefore, perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance, a performance also out of that which ye have. Verse 12, the focal point. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. Now, if you still got your Bible, don't flip over to the eloquent. Psalms 8 that David penned. Started with stanza 4. Psalms 8. Starting with stanza 4. I meant to read this in the morning scripture. It complimented uh, the Philippians passage that I read. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man, that thou visiteth him. Look at this, look at this. For thou, talking about God, for thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Look at six. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands, of God's hands. And thou hast put all things under his feet. Now, our main text, especially verse 12, states at that A portion, if for if there be first a willing mind for if there be first a willing mind and for a subject for this message the Holy Spirit breathed on me a willing mind, a willing mind. The main thing that the Lord wants to hear from us today as his believers is if there be first any willing minds in this house of worship. Don't be slow in saying amen. A willing mind is the start of a true Christian's new life. Now, considering this truth, it begs the question, what then are we willing to do for Christ? The song states it eloquently, only what you do for Christ will last. In our main text, uh, section A, section again states, for if there be first a willing mind. Y'all heard that old platitude, that old statement that a journey of a thousand miles starts with the what? The first step. The first step that you take towards God starts you on your journey for praying 
for a willing mind. We said, I had a witness in there. For us to do anything for Jesus, we must first submit ourselves to his guidance in his way everlasting. Jesus does this by giving us his sufficient grace to help us develop a willing mind. Now, there are seven supporting scriptures appertaining or that give reference to this sermon affirmation that stresses Jesus' expectation for us and our need to strive to develop and sustain a willing mind, a mind that is open to the Lord's will and his way. Listen to them as I read them. The first scripture is found in Isaiah 1 and 19. 1 and 19, Isaiah 1 and 19. If ye be willing or have and sustain a willing mind and strive diligently to be obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. Now, complimentary scripture that parallels that in the same book. In Isaiah 6 and 8, Isaiah witnessed that he heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And then said I, Isaiah, with a willing mind, here am I. Oh, send me. <laughs> then, second one. Judges 5 and 2, Judges 5 and 2, which states, Praise ye the Lord for the avenging, or they took the lead of Israel when the people willingly offered themselves. Now this verse extols the virtue of those that had a willing mind to do God's will without Hesitation. You all do know Mary, the human vessel that bore Jesus in her womb, and had a willing mind and accepted the Lord's will by merely saying to the angel, Be it done unto me. And when's the last time any of us uh, uh, submitted that willingly to the Lord with absolute? Absolutely no hesitation. How many of you remember the story of the rich young ruler that came to Jesus and reported all of his virtues before Jesus and then asked Jesus uh, what further did he need to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus interrogated the man. He asked the man, and you know, Jesus would do that. <laughs> Anybody in here ever had to have Jesus interrogate you about what you've done? <laughs> have you ever done something wrong or even thought about doing something wrong when the Lord come right beside you and said, Now, aren't you my child? That's why Paul, over another 2 Corinthians, turned around and said, Let a man or a woman examine himself. That's right. That's right. That's right. Self examination is something else. You can't cheat on yourself. <laughs> Good God Almighty. Yeah, Jesus interrogated the man. He asked the man if he knew the commandments not to commit adultery, not to kill, not to steal, not to bear false witness, and to honor his father and mother. Now, Jesus already knew, but for the sake of those there and us later on, it's there in this text. And Jesus then told uh, the man, uh, stuck his chest out after that and emphatically declared to Jesus that, that he had kept all those commandments from his youth up. Yes, I have, Jesus. Can't you hear him? Yes, I've done that. Uh, I'm kind of glad you brought that up. It makes me feel kind of glad at myself, Leo, that I've done it. 
talking the truth. We something else. Humanity something else. Just think about Putin and think about how humanity something else. Then Jesus told the young man that he lacked one thing. He told the young man to go and sell all that you have and give it to the poor. And the story ends with the man going away sorrowful for he, on the way to ending, Mike, he was very rich. He was very rich. Does this sound like anyone in America that might fit that category of person? He did the exact opposite of Mary because he did not have a willing mind to follow Jesus. Number three, Nehemiah 11 and 2. And the people blessed all the men that willingly offered themselves to dwell at Jerusalem. And then Psalms 110, number three. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power, God, in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. Number five. 1 Thessalonians 2 and 8. So being affectionately desirous of you, we are or we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls because ye were dear unto us. The song, yes. <laughs> we're coming into play, Brother Mary. <laughs> Number six. Number six, the Philippians 2 and 13 says, for us to forever remember and store in our hearts, for it is God which worketh in you both, here we go, to will or to have a willing mind and to do of his good pleasure. Now all these scriptures are reflective of the divine will of God uh, from he who hath the only absolute eternal willing mind. God is the only one that has an absolute and eternal willing mind. And have you ever pondered what God has in his willing mind towards us, uh, his creation, that which is in store for mankind in his determinate or absolute purpose which emanates from his eternal foreknowledge, that which is before the foundations of the world and beyond. Now, Bible students, later on today, Please, if you're writing and taking biblical notes about the scriptures that we're using, uh, look at Acts 2 and 23, Acts 26 and 5, 1 Peter 1 and 20 in your leisure later on today. Jeremiah 29 and 11 states, I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Thoughts from my willing mind toward you. Saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. That's what we were talking about, Freddie. They say that stuff said, uh, you know, call a spade a spade. Yeah. Some of this stuff that some of these political parties are advocating is nothing but pure hatred. I'm just telling you, I'm just going to tell the truth. Just hatred. Amen. Just plain hatred. Just eating up with it. Yeah. And the rest of us, what do we do? So well, what can we do? Well, you, you can pray to God and believe that he will answer your prayer and he will take care of it. That's what you can do. And then the next secular thing you do, take your hind ends to the poles and vote. Yeah. 
and take somebody with you. I'm, I'm getting tired of it. You can't even turn the news on without something ridiculous and ignorant coming out of it about what people are saying. Well, and, and then, then, then the news is sometimes the culprit. They're sitting up giving the other lawyers for the other side ammunition to use in their defense. There is no defense. I tell everybody, you're not the president of the United States. You go out here and violate the law and see what in the daggone devil is going to happen to you. You're going to jail. This is ridiculous. None of us in here ever thought we would decline this far. Well, I'm still going to vote for him. Ah, help me somebody. It has nothing to do with Democrat or De Republican. It talks about who you got in charge of your country. Once you're elected, you're no longer Democrat or Republican. You're a representative or you're the president or you're on the Supreme Court. <laughs> Talk this from the bottom of my heart. Talk civics for a long time to 14 year old students and beg them at the end of the year, you then go out and become a good citizen. We're only as good, the, the leaders are only as good as the people that they're leading. A willing mind. A willing mind. A willing mind. Oh, how majestic is the mind of God. The Lord's willing mind is eternally set on willingness. 2 Peter 3 and 9b testifies to this truth. It says, the Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And that's what Almighty God is willing to do for those that have the capacity to receive him with a willing mind as Lord and Savior. That same mind of God that the prophet Isaiah transcribed in Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9 relates how the Lord describes his mind and thoughts towards his creation because he is eternally willing to do so. The Lord said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And yet, somebody else in here join me and say, and yet. And yet, Dr. Peoples, our late pastor, taught us that prayer is thinking the thoughts of God. He went on to say that it's communion with God. And the Holy Spirit leads me to think on this wise about Doc's statement. I called him Doc. And the operative side of this truth is that God controls the conversation, not us. Y'all get that? God controls the conversation, not us. However, somebody join me and say however too. Some folks are so caught up with themselves that they just babble on even in prayer. Never pause long enough to hear what the Lord is saying to them. Somebody say ouch. Somebody say amen. <laughs> That's an ouch and amen for all of us. And God inspired the shepherd King David to prayerfully write the question in holy writ in Psalms 8. 4A and 5A. I'll read it again. What is man? What are you, man? That thou art willingly mindful. You know, David was out there in the dark, tending to his sheep, Ronnie, and had all his thoughts. Those are good places to be for the Lord talk to you. And he just said that, and he's already witnessed his own foolishness. Don't, don't, don't think the preacher doesn't understand we all sin and come short. 
And he asked the question, and God was leading him and asking, him, What is man anyhow that thou art mindful of him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. And yet, there's my word again, and yet God in his willing mind made mankind to have dominion over the works of his hands. And he's put all things under his feet. Yes, I am more than certain, aren't you, that the Lord, our God, has the expectation that we, his creation, understand the awesome responsibility that he has placed on our shoulders in Psalms 8 and 5. In light of that point, it stands to reason that God expects us to present ourselves to him as willing believers uh, with willing minds uh, to do his blessed will. An alternate version of Romans 12 and 1 states, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, uh, to present your bodies, mm -hmm. dedicating all of yourselves set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your reasonable, rational, logical, intelligent act of worship. In short, present your willing minds unto the Lord which is reasonable service for all blood-bought children of God. And what about us in 2022? Do we have a willing mind to serve the Lord and to do his will? If so, what willful thoughts flow through our minds? Are our thoughts geared towards doing God's will, or are our minds merely geared towards doing our own will. The Holy Spirit would not let this sermon pass from me, y'all. All along my preparing the sermon, he keeps telling me right now, he keeps telling me, just preach it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, y'all. Don't worry about a thing. You can rest assured. I'm not just preaching to you. I'm preaching to myself as well. It's a poor preacher that won't admit that. Do you often end your prayers with the statement, nevertheless, not my will, but thine, O oh Lord, be done? Do we, sisters and brothers, uh, truly want to do God's will? What a great soul-searching question, especially in times like these, isn't it? Do we get up a morning saying, good morning, Lord, Thank you for another day to seek and to do your will and not mine. Or do we ask ourselves, what am I going to do today to satisfy my will and my way? Better still, how diligent are we in seeking to know what God's will for us truly is? My sisters and my brothers, the Lord wanted me to stop by here today to preach about a willing mind. <laughs> a willing mind. If we have a willing mind, what are we doing with it? What is a willing mind capable of doing? Wow, what a question. <laughs> hey, what are we doing with it? There are two kinds of minds. There is a corruptible mind that is set to do evil. And then there is the willing mind that is saturated in the Lord who strengthens those that have one to seek by the grace of God to do his blessed will. Again, this is the expectation of the Lord for all his blood purchased people. After all, we are created in his image. Jesus breathed into the dust of that image the, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. 
the essential elements that make up a willing mind was transferred to humanity by way of that same breath uh, along with free moral agency. Imagine, if you will, did you catch that? Imagine, if you will, the ability to go to God in prayer and the ability to do good as well as those that choose otherwise. Both are contained in the same breath that flows out of the willing mind of God. God did not create a robot or a puppet that couldn't be manipulated to do only what he chose for him to do. God created mankind for fellowship. He wants his creation to willingly come to him and worship him on our own. He will never force himself on anyone. Therefore, if we have the capacity to receive Jesus into our hearts and confess him with our mouths that he is Lord and that he died for our sins, we then will be able by his grace to work to build and sustain a willing mind dedicated towards seeking his will and his way, uh, the way uh, everlasting uh, and the redeemed of the Lord did what? Uh, we all said uh, amen. Uh, some folks, uh, perhaps those viewing uh, the live stream broadcast might be thinking, well, uh, Reverend Owens, uh, don't think that uh, don't you think that the Lord, and I said, Lord, uh, stop them right now. That's a dangerous thinking that they're doing, so don't even go there. Replace that thought with a prayer that says something like, Dear Lord, uh, please show me the way uh, to continuously seek you uh, and to understand how to be willing uh, to stay open to your guidance and your instructions. Truly, Lord, you bless us each day uh, by providing new mercies, uh, new grace to sustain us. Uh, and oft times we ignore to take your blessings, and we take your blessings for granted. Uh, Adam and Eve did just that. Uh, they succumbed to Satan's lure of temptation and sin against God. You do know that sin clouds one's thinking therefore making it difficult to maintain a willing mind that's focused on the Lord. Sin is mankind's willingness to go against God's will. In short, it's mankind's missing the mark, meaning missing the mark of God's standard that he set for all humanity. By Adam and Eve's sin, all of mankind was made to sin. And since that time, we've been plagued with sin ever since. Psalms 51 and 5 states this condition this way. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin. Then my mother conceived me. None of us have escaped this set of circumstances. We all sin. We all sin. We all sin. We all sin. And we all come short of the glory of God. We sin against God in oh so many ways. Sometimes even though we are believers, we sin by being impatient. The children of Israel were impatient. They insisted. They insisted on having a king instead of waiting on the Lord to supply who he had already prepared to be their king, King David. In doing so, they were seeking to satisfy their will and not the Lord's. Sometimes believers get in a hurry and are not willing to wait on the Lord. They get so impatient, they forget to listen to God's word that states in Isaiah 40 and 31. Y'all know that verse? They y'all know that verse, but they that have a willing mind that wait on the Lord, what? Shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk 
and not faint. Anybody in here know this scripture? What about you? Are you willing to wait on the Lord? 2 Timothy 3 and 16 reminds us that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Then why can't we follow Isaiah 40 and 41? The Lord often tells us to wait on him, to lead us in the way he desires for us to go. We don't have any business trying to hurry God. And God wants us to seek his will and not ours. Our God and our Savior does not need our assistance in helping him work for us. What we need and what he needs from us is for us to strengthen our faith and prayers for him to sustain a willing mind in us and give us the patience to wait until he is ready to reveal to us his will. I'm going to put a personal note in this. Every single time I don't wait on the Lord, I make not a mistake. I make a heck of a mistake. Now, I don't want to get in. Y'all don't want to get in my business. I ain't going to tell all my business, but you just take my word for it. Every last time. And that's the preacher saying this to you. Every last time. And my mother used to tell me, said, boy, all right, you're going to bust your head wide open. I don't know what she's talking about. And she used to say that. That's one thing. She, she worked hard on me. You're going to bust your head wide open. There you go. You just got to have your way. And when I did that, Freddie, boom. And not right then did I, not, I didn't understand it right then, but later on down the road, the Lord's saying, you didn't wait. The Lord's saying, what can I say? I gave you scripture. The Lord wants us to trust and never doubt, and he will surely bring us out. He will move us out of our anxiousness. He will move us out of our despondency. He will move us out of our doubts about tomorrow. And it's vitally important that we all pray for the Lord to strengthen our faith that he will take care of us. We've got to believe in the eternal willing mind of God that his will has already been done for us, and we will see it if we yield not to temptation and attempt to try and rush him in blessing us. Oh, y'all know that song. Y'all know that song. You know it well. Yield not to temptation. For yielding is sin, each victory will help you, some other to win. Fight valiantly onward, evil passion subdue. Look ever to Jesus. He will carry you through. Y'all know the profane? As the Savior to help you. Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid you. He will carry you through. Now listen to this third verse. To him that overcometh, God giveth a crown. Through faith we will conquer, though often cast down. He who is our Savior, our strength will renew. What's the rest of it? 
look ever to Jesus. He will carry you through. I tell you, oh, I tell you, I, I know a man. Hey, they call him the God man. And in the God man dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, as per Colossians 2 and 9. He is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And he came down through 42 generations expressing his willingness to make known the Father. He stopped by a garden called Gethsemane where he experienced the agony of his own will. He prayed an introspective prayer within his own counsel appertaining to his willingness to take the sins of mankind upon himself to wash away our sin debt with his own blood. All this falls under the heading of the mystery of God. The prayer Jesus prayed in the garden was for our sakes. Jesus is fully human and fully divine. The humanity of Jesus felt the stress and the agony of what he was going to experience in his sacrificial death on the cross. He must needs go through that agony because he is the perfect sacrifice. He, the second person of the Godhead, had to be fully human. All three synoptic gospels recorded the anguish he experienced, which proved that he was the one and only complete and adequate sacrifice or propitiation for our sins. Jesus told his disciples, my soul, hey, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. And then he went a little further. He always goes a little further. Yeah. Haven't you known Jesus always going a little further in your life? We got but he doesn't in his own earthly ministry. He goes a little further. He went a little further. Oh Lord Almighty. Oh Lord Almighty. Oh Lord Almighty. He went a little further, as is his divine nature to do, and prayed, Oh my Father, it is possible, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. He prayed this after he had related in his parable that no man take of my life no man take of my life from me but I lay it down willingly of myself I had the power to willingly lay it down and I had the power to willingly take it again this commandment have I received of my father there is no contradiction in this account there was never any hesitation on Jesus' part for he is the second person in the Godhead and is immutable. He changeth not. Therefore, he concluded the prayer in accord with his immutable nature by saying, Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And then, oh, Holy Ghost, then. Oh, Holy Ghost, then. Shortly thereafter, Jesus journeyed on down the Via Dolorosa. He burned it on down to Calvary where he willingly allowed them to nail him to a Roman cross that they hoisted up between heaven and earth doing what he had predicted they would do. And when he said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll willingly draw all men or people unto myself. Uh, on that cross, Jesus suffered the pain uh, and endured the shame uh, for you and for me. Uh, he who was the personification of the willing mind of God demonstrated his willingness by praying within himself for the forgiveness of those that know not what they do. Then when Jesus decided that he had completed the second part of his earthly mission, he cried out, uh, it is finished and hung his head and cried out one last time from the cross with a loud voice, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Then he gave up the ghost and died. Jesus' disciples asked for his body, 
and then took him down from that cross. They prepared him for a proper burial, placed his body in a barred tomb where he remained for three days. And then, Holy Ghost, then Jesus got up as he said he would on that third and appointed morning with all power in heaven and earth in his mighty hands, power to do all things, power to alter man's downward fall. If they would but trust him with their lives. I wish I had a witness today. What about those of you that have not accepted Jesus as your personal savior in this sanctuary today? And those of you that are watching live stream, are you willing to do what is written in Romans 10, 9 and 10? It outlines what is required of you in order to be saved and receive eternal life. It says, if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Jesus from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. John 3.18 warns those that refuse to do so. It says, he who believes in him, Jesus, is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. The light has come into the world and men and women love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Friends, please don't be willing to let this be your fate. Let Jesus come into your hearts today. Please do it without delay. Today is not promised to you. Seek Jesus while he might be found. Yes, Tonight, tomorrow, might be too late. Come now. Come now. Come now willingly to Jesus. Is there one today? There might be someone that slid in here and and you didn't want anybody to know that you hadn't accepted Christ, we'll give you an opportunity to come now. And those of you that are watching on television, uh, on the screen, on your computer, someone is standing by to hear your confession. Call the number that's on the screen. He is, I tell you, he is willing to aid you. Uh, he will carry you through. Uh, how many of you know this to be true? Uh, has he carried you through in your life? Up to this very moment, he's carrying me right now. And what about you? Is he carrying you right now? If you have a willing mind to accept him, accept him. And then Jesus will do the rest. Lastly, lastly, God's will our divine keeper his will for humankind is recorded in Isaiah 26 3 and as I close this message out listen to how the amplified version expresses it it's very interesting you, God, will keep in perfect and constant peace the one whose willing mind is steadfast, that is committed and focused on God in both inclination and character because he trusts and takes refuge in you, not himself, in you, God, with hope and confident expectation. That's the message. Stop, Solly, you play a little time. Just the instrumental. That's the message. That is the message. That's the message. It is the message. We want to. Where's, well, I got a, a brother Fry, come here. Please, brother Fry, come and stand in the chair. We don't want to leave. 
without having someone take the seat, stand behind the seat, show you we're a receptive congregation. We want some new converts. I tell you what, we got a whole lot of work to do. How many, somebody say amen in this church. We got a whole lot of unchurched people. And we need to go after them. You can't talk about doing anything else till you commit to that. Am I right about it? Every time I talk to some young adult, I'm almost afraid, Ron. I've had several turn around and say, I said, well, you're at this certain age. I wasn't talking about their age or anything. I said, I said, uh, I, I said, can you, uh, could you just tell me why, uh, why you just now coming? And said, said nobody's ever asked me. We're looking for some heavy excuse for why folks have not accepted Christ in the pardon of the sin. We have to, we have to do our jobs, and they're not just left to the preacher to do it. Good conversation start. Where do you go to church after you get to meet a new person? You ever had anybody tell you, well, I don't go anywhere. Then the Lord said, bingo. Confess me to him. A willing mind to do that. Let us stand. Now, thank you, Brother Fry. He's a good deacon here. Good layman, good deacon. Let us stand and receive the benediction. We've received the word, now let us receive the benediction. Now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, abide, now, henceforth, and forevermore, let us all say together in unity, amen.